Hello guys, so today we are going to discuss on the topic connection oriented and connectionless protocol. So first let's see connection oriented protocol. A connection oriented protocol is a networking protocol used to establish a data communication session in which endpoint devices are primary protocols to establish end to end connections and then the subsequent data stream is delivered in sequential transfer mode. Connection oriented protocols guarantee delivery of packets by making use of acknowledgements and retransmission of data. That is, whenever a computer wants to communicate with another computer, the communication between those two computers needs to be good and reliable. So it can guarantee that the data is being received correctly. So this is the structure of connection oriented protocol where this is the sender end and this is the receiver end and these are the data being transferred from sender to the receiver as a stream of data. Then let's see the example of connection unit protocol that is TCP transmission control protocol. TCP is one of the main protocols of internet protocol. It lies between the application layer and network layer which are used in providing reliable delivery services. Reliable delivery services in the sense that it assures that the data are being transmitted and received correctly. It helps in the exchange of messages between different devices over a network. The internet protocol which establishes the technique for sending data packets between computers work with TCP. For example, when you want to view a web page uh, or a download a file, you would, ex you would expect to view the web page in order without missing any content. So this is where the TCP comes into play. Then let's see working of TCP. In TCP, connection is established by using three-way handshaking. The client sends the segment with its sequence number. The server in return sends its segment with its own sequence number as well as the acknowledgement sequence, which is one more than the client server receives the acknowledgement of its segment. Then it sends the acknowledgement to the server. In this way, the connection is established between the client and the server. So this is how the TCP works. So this is the sender and this is the receiver. And first the sender will send a message as SIM. And after receiving the message from the sender, the receiver will thereby send a message which is SIM acknowledgement and as the sender receives SYN acknowledgement it will further send another message called acknowledgement so this is what called three way handshaking so let's see the advantage of TCP first of all TCP is a reliable protocol reliable in the sense as I said earlier the messages that are being transmitted and received are correct. Second, it provides an error checking mechanism as well as one for recovery. That way it checks the errors when the data are being transmitted. And third, it gives flow control and it makes sure that data reaches the proper destination in exact order. And it is an open protocol not owned by any of the organization. Disadvantage of TCP TCP is made for wide area network, thus its size can become an issue for smaller networks with low resources. Second, TCP runs several layers so it can slow down the speed of the network. Third, it is not generic in nature, meaning it cannot represent any protocol stack other than the TCP. That is, it can work, it cannot work with a Bluetooth connection. And the second one, 
connectionless protocol a connectionless protocol refers to the communication between two network endpoints without a prior arrangement in which one network endpoint simply sends a message to the other at the sending end the device transmits the unit of data before ensuring that the receiving end's device is ready this type of protocol describes most open internet transmissions although some protocols request a transmission as needed to allow for error correction and this is the structure of connectionless protocol as i said this is the sender and this is the receiver end and there are packets which are datas and each packet is routed by different routers and hence the data is being transmitted and the example of connectionless protocol is udp user datagram protocol udp is simplest transport layer communication protocol available it involves minimum amount of communication mechanism udp is said to be an unreliable transport protocol but it uses ip services which provides best effort delivery mechanism in udp the receiver does not guarantee an acknowledgement of packet received and in turn the sender doesn't does not wait for any acknowledgement of packet being sent and let's see the working of udp the udp protocol works by immediately firing data at the receiver who made a data transmission request until the transmission is complete or terminated sometimes called a fire and forget protocol udp fires data at a recipient in no particular sequence without confirming delivery or checking if packets arrived as intended while tcp establishes a formal connection via its handshake agreement before sending data udp doesn't have time for the it speeds up data transfer by sending packet without making any agreement with the receiver then it's up to the recipient to make sense of the data and this is the working of udp and this is the sender side and this is the receiver side and this is the data is being transmitted from the sender to the receiver and here the data has been transmitted not in a sequential order as it its the data are being sent and now let's see the advantages of udp and udp is a example of connectionless protocol so first of all no connection is needed to send or receive data so apps and operating systems work faster broadcast and multi class transmission is available that is one udp transmission can send data to multiple recipients operates over a larger range of network conditions than tcp udp communication is more efficient it can transmit live and real time data and these are the disadvantages of udp first it's connectionless which makes data transfer unreliable Uh, there is no assurance or guarantee that the data is being transmitted and received are correct so second there is no system in place to acknowledge a successful data transfer third there there is no way to know if data is delivered in its original state or in sequence order it has no error control so it drops packets when errors are being detected it cannot sequence data so data can arrive in any order or out of order thank you everyone